everyone. Welcome to the next installment of Charts in Perspective, where we use charts to dive into the world of economics. I'm Jennifer Nash, an economic and market research analyst for Vetify. Today, we are going to assess the market's overall valuation by looking at four market valuation indicators that I update monthly. Market valuation indicators are used by investors and analysts to gauge whether markets are overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued relative to historical norms. At the beginning of each month, I update a handful of these indicators on the Advisor Perspectives website. However, for this video, we're only going to focus on four of them to try to answer the question, is the market still overvalued? The four indicators that we're going to examine are the Cressmont P-E ratio, the P-E 10 ratio, the Q ratio, and the relationship of the S&P 500 price to a regression trend line. I want to note that all of the data used in this video in the charts is through the end of February. Also, it's important to point out that these indicators are not useful as short-term signals of market directions. Periods of over and undervaluation can last for many years. First, to facilitate comparisons, I've adjusted the two PE ratios and the Q ratio to the arithmetic means and the inflation-adjusted S&P composite to its exponential regression. You'll notice that the S&P regression data is plotted as an area chart, uh, the light blue shaded regions, rather than a line chart like the other three methods. This is to one, help make the comparison a little bit easier to read, and two, reinforce the difference between the regression series and the other three, which are just simple ratios. On the vertical axis, the percentages show how far over or under each metric is from its mean value. So let's get into the data. In the upper left-hand corner, the table summarizes how far each method is from its arithmetic mean. At the end of February, the Crestmont PE was 134% above, the PE10 ratio 89% above, the Q ratio 93% above, and the inflation-adjusted S&P composite was 149% above its regression trend line. So from this, we can determine that the market is overvalued somewhere in the range of 89 to 149%, depending on the indicator. This is the highest range we've seen in two years, dating back to March, 2022. So the previous chart does a satisfactory job of illustrating these four approaches to market valuation. Our next chart provides an alternative view. Here, we've adjusted the Crestmont PE, the PE10, and the Q ratio to their geometric means rather than their arithmetic means which is what most people think of when they hear the word average. By using the geometric means, our attention towards outliers increases. So again, in the upper left-hand corner, we can see how far each method is from its respective mean. By using this approach, the range of overvaluation is slightly higher, anywhere between 108% to 158%. Here, we aim to provide a simplified summary. We've taken the average of the four series and plotted it here in this chart, the purple line. Additionally, we've included the standard deviations above and below the mean for that average series, which is represented by the red dashed lines. At the end of February, the average of the four is at 116%, indicating that it's currently two standard deviations above its historical mean, which signals an overvalued market. Once again, this is the highest level we've seen in two years. Once more, for an alternative perspective, here's the same chart as the previous one, but this time with the geometric mean and its standard deviations. The latest average of the four is at 132%, two standard deviations above its historical mean. So now let's go back to our initial question at the beginning of this video. After reviewing these four charts, I think it's safe to say that yes, the market is still overvalued. To close out, I want to reiterate a previous point. These indicators are not meant to be used nor are useful as short-term signals of market direction. From these charts, you can see that the periods of overvaluation and undervaluation can last for many years. Metrics are more appropriate for formulating expectations for long-term market performance. That's all for our discussion on our latest market valuation update. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you found our analysis insightful. For more economic and market insights, you can find my content regularly on the Advisor Perspectives website under the AP Charts section.